Like all cool people, I'm interested in statistical analysis and probability theory. Like in that video where we talked about 1940s code breaking. I also like teletypewriters. You know, those machines what sent telegraphs before fax machines and emails were invented. Well, I've had this idea swilling around in my mind for a long time. Have you heard of the infinite monkey theorem? So this is the idea that if you had a monkey and you sat down at a typewriter and it's hitting away at the keys for an infinite amount of time, eventually that monkey will just purely by chance type out the entire works of Shakespeare. This is similar to the Library of Babel or Babel, a library of everything. Everything that has ever been written or will ever be written. Because if you manage to generate every single possible combination of characters and punctuation, in that library somewhere will be every single book that has ever been written or could ever be written. And this is something real. You can go to the Library of Babel website and although it's not complete yet because it takes such a long time for the computer to generate all of these possibilities, somewhere on that database is going to be a future bestseller that hasn't even been conceived by the author yet, but already exists just in possibility. This is an idea going all the way back to Aristotle and Cicero, so what do I want to do with it? Well, I want to test it, and I'm definitely not the first to do this. There was a computer program which was created by a guy called Dan Oliver, and that ran, I can't even, I don't even know what this number is, 42.1 billion, billion, billion monkey years. That's his measure, not mine. The only thing that came out that was vaguely Shakespearean was Valentine. Cease, which you can find in the Two Gentlemen of Verona. And there's a website called the Monkey Shakespeare Simulator that managed to get rumour, open your ears, from Henry IV. That only took the equivalent of 2.7 million million billion 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 monkey years. And there's quite a few websites out there you could try this all for yourself. This monkey simulator chanced to cross hack after seven hours in the real world, but that would have been four days of non-stop monkey typing. But by far the best. In 2002, the University of Plymouth spent two grand putting a typewriter into a monkey enclosure in a zoo and the monkeys just smashed up the typewriter! And, and then pooed and weed on it a little bit. But I am undeterred. I believe that this can happen. <laughs> After all, it ain't gonna go worse than that. We have a typewriter. We have a monkey. Let's go! Okay, I'm gonna close my eyes and think like a monkey. I've lost a cap of a key. Oh dear. William Sh Apes. Beer. Yeah? Okay. Oh shit. So did we get anything? Dusk. Damn, it's not in Shakespeare. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Fox and fog. In your face, University of Plymouth. Well, I think the monkey stand-in has proved himself to be a bit useless. So, let's try and build a machine. We have a Creed 7B telegraph machine. So this works with telegraph code. You send pulses into it, and each unique combination of five pulses tells it to print a particular character. And now we need something to generate the random pulses. I'm gonna use the Music Thing Modular Turing Machine, which is a Eurorack module usually used for music. Now we need to make sure that they can talk to each other and this teletypewriter runs at a speed of 50 board. And so each of those pulses is lasting 20 milliseconds. So now I'm calibrating the clock for the Turing machine, this voltage controlled oscillator here. That is telling the Turing machine that its pulses should last for 20 milliseconds. It's interpreting all the pulses and printing everything mechanically by the way. Pretty amazing. And I'm using the relay in my electromagnetic switch module as an amplifier because the solenoid on the teletype needs a little bit more current and voltage than the Turing machine can provide. You may have already thought of a problem that it's not going to do the carriage return when it reaches the end of the line. So I'm going to have to do that myself. Uh, so when it reaches the end of the line, there'll be a bell sound like that. And I just have to press this red button here and advance it one line up. Okay, here we go.
Okay. Hmm, well, I didn't have to do much of that carriage return because it was returning itself quite regularly, a bit too regularly. And looking around, there's a few other characters that seem to be occurring a little bit too frequently. If we look at my telegraph code key here, handily on a blank Eurorack panel, which you can buy from the Hack Tindy shop, you see that carriage return and line only have one hole in the five bit code. So the teletypewriter has an idle mode and to take it out of that idle mode for it to then receive the five bit character code, you first need to put in a start bit which is a space so low or a zero and then at the end you've got a stop bit which will put the machine into its idle mode which is a hole so a high signal a one so i was expecting the machine to be going in and out of idle mode all the time but it seemed to be staying in operation a lot more than i would have expected so in combination with the fact that we're getting a lot of carriage returns points to the fact that we're getting more spaces than holes, more zeros than ones. And although this is a small sample, if it were totally random, it should be a 50-50 distribution. What I forgot about is that the pulse output only lasts half as long as this first bit. So watch as this first bit gets lit up, the pulse only lasts half as long as the bit. So you're actually getting a 10 millisecond pulse, but luckily you get the full 20 milliseconds out of this jack. And you'll also notice that letter shift is all holes or ones. So now that we're getting more ones, we should be more likely to be staying in letter shift, which was a problem before. We're getting loads of symbols and numbers, which are a bit useless to us. Well, still no soliloquies. This is not going so well. I've assessed our objectives here, and um, when we have the monkey, yes. Typewriter, yeah, we got that, got that. I multiply the amount of chips that I eat by the likelihood of electrocution. Um, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to find a way around this. Now, if you make music, you might have come across something called a quantizer. Basically, what a quantizer does is it takes something that's imperfect and it will change it so that it aligns with a predetermined pattern, a grid, a template. For example, you can do this with timing. So say you have some drums and they're slightly off the beat, you can quantize them and move them further onto the beat. And similarly with pitch, you can take some randomly generated pitches and lock them, move them around so that they fit within a musical scale. Well, what I'm thinking of is a linguistic quantizer. And don't panic, I have half an A-level in English literature, and we've already actually covered a load of the patterns of language in our cryptanalysis video with the Colossus computer. They used the structures of language to statistically analyze secret messages and find patterns to break into them. I expect you already knew that E is the most commonly occurring letter in the English language. That's why E in Morse code is just dot, really simple. And also why E punched in telegraph code is just a single hole to reduce wear on the machine and make the tape stronger. There's loads of patterns, even a known frequency for double letters like the O in moon. So I'm sure that there is a way that I can program the machines that I make, modular synthesizers, to take in random noise and output something closer to coherent language. I've already made a telegraph and enigma lamp board which display voltages as characters. And on Patreon, we started a project where I'm making a voltage controlled typewriter. The difference between that, the lamp boards and the Creed 7B is that the Creed takes information in serially, whereas the others can read data from a voltage in parallel. Now don't expect anything soon. This is gonna be an ongoing project that's just in the back of my mind while we're making new machines. And my prediction is that we fail miserably, but that's never a reason not to try it. And I would expect some unexpected discoveries along the way.